Almost ready for the concrete floor thermal mass. All the PEX pipe in-floor heat piping is now in. It's been a long couple days, but let me show you what I did. So I've got 3,000 lineal feet of half inch oxygen barrier uh, high heat PEX pipe in, uh, in my floor of the greenhouse. So this is going to be filled with not glycol, I'm thinking just rainwater. I hear that that is the, the best thing uh, for in-floor heat, but uh, it all runs to a manifold there so I can pour concrete and then hook it up to a manifold now, I did this same system in my shop. Um, geez, I gotta walk, watch where I'm stepping here. I don't wanna step on the lines. But uh, so I put these pipes in the shop when I built the shop myself too, exactly like this. But in the shop, I have three inches of insulation underneath the pad. And I almost wish I didn't do that in the shop because it prevents the ground from being a heat sink. So there, is it's kind of this weird thing the ground sucks heat because the earth is kind of a constant temperature it's going to suck heat down but if i apply heat and lots of it because the greenhouse gets like hot all summer and then it's hot in the winter as well it should i'm hoping the ground acts as just a, this massive heat sink um unit similar to how uh some greenhouse builders, they call it a climate battery and they dig down and put some air tubes in. But this, I'm using water. And the reason I like water is it's quite a bit more versatile. So uh, my water storage thermal mass tanks, I've got all these uh, 45 gallon drums that are gonna go at the back. So once the concrete's in, I gotta wait 20 days and then uh, I can paint the concrete black back here. And then I have 50 45 gallon black steel drums that I was going to line uh, the whole back of the greenhouse. But I'm, I, this is giving me this other idea and I'm changing my, uh, um, geez, I can't walk. Ch changing my idea for that. I might not use those drums. I've been looking at these things called, their, uh, things called solar evacuated tubes. So they're essentially solar hot water heaters that are super efficient. Um, they can get water super hot. So with this in-floor heat thing, the sun's gonna hit the black concrete with all these pipes in in the winter time. And the sun, it's kind of like I'm in its own solar heater. That concrete's gonna get nice and warm and it's gonna warm the water and I'm going to continually circulate the water in the greenhouse concrete floor into the shop concrete as well. So all winter, it's kind of like the greenhouse is a bit of my heater and the shop big thermal mass pad as well is also the thermal mass storage. Uh, so all, all these, these big buildings, big footprint all combined, you get it up to temperature, it's a huge thermal mass uh, and in the greenhouse, it gets very, very hot, like minus 50 outside, but a sunny day when it's blasted, like the entire wall, and, and it'll get to plus 35 Celsius in here. So with the black concrete, I'm going to soak up as much of that thermal energy as I can, and it'll go in the rain pipes. But with this, so I got two manifolds, this and the shop one, I have to connect to one another, and I'm kind of going to have to have some sort of tank in between them some kind of maybe expansion tank or holding tank now so I, if i'm doing that kind of anyways i understand that these solar thermal panels uh you can't use pex and you can't put it th through concrete so if i put those solar panels on the roof uh i couldn't run it in the concrete because it gets so hot at the concrete will crack so I'll run it like along the inside of the roof to uh, 
one of my water storage tanks or a few of them, like a insulated tank. Uh, in that insulated tank will be the rainwater for just for the closed system for the in-floor heat, but you run a coil with a separate pump so it goes from the evacuated solar tubes to heat the water like a coil in there and that that stuff has glycol in uh, I understand especially if they're outside but here's something nobody's ever done and I'm picking my brain on it those 45 gallon drums I lose a lot of space because they're uh, two foot diameter three feet high so I lose literally two feet of space in the greenhouse having those I've seen some used deals I haven't picked picked any up yet but these solar evacuated tubes what I might do is line the walls of the inside of the greenhouse with the solar evacuated tubes so for example if you have them on your roof uh, I understand that in the summertime it gets so hot you have to like have a dump line to cool because it'll get so hot it'll like explode like it's a ridiculous amount of heat you get out of these things but in here in the summertime when I don't really need heat it's all shaded back here like my design and as the sun comes and it gets cold outside and the sun's hitting this back wall that's when I need heat so if I put these instead of those 45 gallon drums because it's hard to plumb them into the whole system and um like a 45 gallon drum it's two it's a significant amount of water which might be good so i'm still debating on this and uh what exactly i'm gonna do but if i put those solar evacuated tubes along the back and i plumb them into my insulated uh, tank with a coil in there and then the in-floor heat pipe so essentially i'm I protect those those solar collectors in the summertime when you don't want any heat, so I don't need a, a dump line or whatever. And in the wintertime when I need heat, then that's what I get heat, like a really simple system. So the building, like just how I'm shading the black concrete, it'll also shade those solar collectors. And I could put them on all the side walls uh, as well because the sidewalls in the summer aren't getting blasted by the uh, the sun. It's only in the wintertime. So if I find a deal, and I've seen some here, and just line the walls with those uh, solar evacuated tubes, could probably just have rainwater in them instead of glycol, because they won't be outside, won't ever freeze. Or maybe you need glycol, but plumb them all together with, so that'll have its own recirculating pump to the coil and then a separate pump for the rainwater tank that goes to the in-floor heat. And I have this new goal that I'm going to heat my large shop and this entire greenhouse in Saskatchewan with no additional heating, including wood. And I, I'm excited about this. Like as I put as I get closer and I'm adding all this thermal mass in, like it works, the building works really good without any of that thermal mass. So that thermal mass is just going to be a massive bonus. And with the solar evacuated tubes, if I can heat, you know, uh, you know, many, many cubic meters of concrete and many, many liters of water in the tanks or in the, the pipes, both in the greenhouse and shop, and I bring it all up to temperature. Whenever the sun shines, when it's cold outside, I bring that all up to temperature, and I think it's doable. So I have this new goal. I'm not even going to uh, uh, need a wood stove or these the furnace and stuff that I put in because, like, again, this is all a massive experiment, my design, there's not a lot of references for me to go off of. I'm kind of experimenting. Like, I, I don't think one person put solar evacuated tubes in a building that's shaded at a particular time of year. But, like, even this, this wall in my shop, I could have solar uh, collectors in the building and all connect them up. So this wall 
two, and this side wall, all with solar collectors, instead of put, having to put them up on the roof uh, outside and have glycol in them. And then another thing, <clears throat> like how the greenhouse is attached to my shop here, um, it turns out I don't, I've been meaning to do this for years, but I don't really use this overhead door. Uh, I just have this other one, but I'm going to leave the overhead door in, but I'm going to build a, a glass wall with a glass commercial door and then uh, the proper pergola or shading overhang. Uh, it'll probably be one halfway up and one at the very top so it doesn't get any summer sun just like a passive solar house. So it's different than a greenhouse. This would be like a passive solar house wall. So I wouldn't use this overhead door for equipment, but at nighttime when this, or on an overcast day in the winter, you close the overhead door to insulate. And then on a sunny day, you open it right up. And then I get all that passive stuff and that's hitting my concrete in the shop that is also, uh, this is actually acid stained, fairly dark. I might just paint it black. And with all that in-floor heat, it's the same concept as with the greenhouse. So all that concrete and thermal mass, it just works, works together, uh, right? And I, it's gonna work. So, and this is all DIY, my design, figuring it out. It's all about the the mass and uh, super insulation, proper design, knowing where the sun is. And I think it's gonna work. So I even put the in-floor heat pipe in here. This is gonna be painted an epoxy white. Um, so right now the sun's at a high angle and the sun's hitting that path. But my wife is just going to have this lined with flower pots and potted plants and things like that. Here's another cool thing. So I only have, it's a, about half of the greenhouse is, is in-ground garden. And the other half is just thermal mass concrete with in-floor heat. Now how this is going to work, that concrete's going to get nice and warm in the wintertime. Uh... So both from just passively the sun and the in-floor heat uh, system. But I can put trays of plants on the concrete, which is, guess what, nice and warm, which is, guess what, what you need for uh, starting seeds. Like we have little electric heat mats that aren't particularly, uh, you know, they cost a bit of money to run anything electric, right, for heating, electric heat. So you can put all your trays and do all your starts on the concrete in the winter time. And then all my micro green trays with lights, I'm going to be, you know, having those on the nice concrete, they're nice wheels, everything's gonna be nice and clean. And those micro green tray starts, I'll probably have the LED lights, but I'm, I'm considering not bothering with even LED grow lights in here because last winter was a test, our first winter that we didn't let it drop below 10 uh, Celsius. And um, yeah, another tangent, but uh, we planted things like in the dead of winter and it kind of, it was hard to get them started and, and germinate seeds. But this year, after this concrete's in, we're going to tackle this, pull quite a bit of stuff in here and then start planting in the heat of the summer, kind of get everything started and established like tomato plants and cucumbers and, and everything so that we'll have established plants that, with ongoing production in the low light uh, winter time so we'll get them up to size and then once they're to size I think they'll produce so I won't be starting a little tomato in you know November December I'll have that tomato started and growing like an indeterminate tomato that just keeps producing or something but uh, we'll see slow process just me I talked to the Hutterites the other day and I was telling them how I'm 
I'm starting my own colony, I keep telling you, but I'm just a colony of one right now, so it takes me a while, and they were laughing at me, but yeah. Plumbing for a bathroom, gotta have a bathroom in the greenhouse, right? So, plumbing for uh, floor drain basin, commercial sink, like this is our kind of our prep area, both for summer produce, like it's nice and cool at, at this door. Don't step on the pipes. Nice and cool from the north there. This is a nice place to be. It's cooler here than uh, outside with no fans going. So all of our produce, you can come in and wash it. Floor drain basins, uh, stuff like that. And yeah. So that's kind of my, my ideas for the thermal mass stuff. So 3,000 feet of... Uh, pecs in the ground so far and so each zone is 330 feet because the rolls came in a thousand foot they say 300 is about max for a half inch pex pipe uh, so yeah pretty exciting hoping to get concrete poured uh, this coming week so I got about I don't know, 4,000 more zip ties to finish zip tying that to all the rebar in there, but should be good. Another thing I did was I ran a whole bunch of additional uh, water lines. So I'll, I have uh, along here, I ran some electrical before we pour concrete in a conduit and everything properly. And then uh, some just a half inch pecs for water lines for watering. So I'll have water with no tripping over hoses in that raised bed, in this bed, in this bed that's locked by the sidewalk so I don't have like a hose over the sidewalk and stuff. So I did that ahead of time. It's all in the concrete hidden. Then I can have drip lines, uh, not a lot of hoses that I'm tripping over. And then I'm, so I, well water lines so straight from the well but also for a rainwater collection got to run that yet but uh, right from the rainwater tanks other pipes so I can choose kind of hard water or rainwater whatever I can, uh, have available or I'm watering with but yeah to try not to miss every anything I'm trying to put everything in place so electrical extra PEX pipes extra water pipes uh, I can't put the the thermal heater pipes in the concrete again because it'll crack. So that'll have to be, you know, put along the, the metal on the walls in the top corner or something. And it's copper, I understand, to wherever I put my holding tanks along the back. Probably on whatever racking or high thing I have for my just rainwater collection tanks for watering. I'll have another tank or two insulated tank for all this in floor heat system so yeah anyways pretty cool that's just a update for where we're at and fun stuff so uh once this concrete is in man is that going to be good because holy moly this is a lot of work but getting there hey thanks for tuning in take care I'm not going to do that.